Gaten hasn't been spread yet, so it's not yet done. But we have time to stop and settle our minds after all the activity of the day. It's all about a piece of cloth, but of course it's about more than just a piece of cloth. It's about cooperation. Gathering the donation together, hosting the event, cleaning up, making the cloth taking the cloth and making it into a robe. All of these things depend on cooperation, which is probably why the Buddha instituted the Gaten to begin with. You look in the Vinaya and there's not much explanation. It doesn't say who was the first person to think of the Gaten, how it came about. It's a very unusual section in the Vinaya. It seems to assume that the people reading the section already know what the Gaten is all about. And so we have to read between the lines. We'll just look at the event. The monks have been together for the rains retreat. And back in those days, at the end of the rains retreat, the monks would scatter, go off into the forest, find some time to meditate alone. But before they would go, lay people had the opportunity to give them cloth. And one gift of cloth was special, the cloth that was used to spread the gatin. The word gatin or gatina in Pali means a frame, like the frame they use in a quilting bee. You stretch the cloth across the frame, frame and you got to make it possible for a lot of people to sew all at once. And this was the time where the monks could pass on their sewing skills. The older monks could teach the younger monks how to sew, how to cut the cloth, how to sew, how to dye the robes. All of which are very important skills if the robe is one of your basic requisites, one of your few requisites. The one that's most likely to get torn, the one that's most likely to get old. And so before the monks scattered into the forest, they would get together to make one robe together as a group. And as a result, the Buddha relaxed some of the rules for the monks who participated in the Gaten like this. They're pretty minor rules. Probably the one that impinges most on the monk's life is the one about not having to have your robes with you or not having to have all your robes with you at dawn. Because for most of the year, you have to be very careful about that. Where are you at dawn? Where are your robes at dawn? The rule was instituted to keep monks from just leaving their robes all over the place where their friends had to take care of them. But for the period of time after the Katen has been spread, then you can meet dawn without all your robes together. And a few other rewards as well, but they're all pretty minor. But it's interesting that the Buddha would encourage the monks to participate in the Gaten by relaxing a couple of rules. So the Gaten was, Gaten was important. And what they call the rewards or the benefits of the Gaten would last as long as you still had two commitments. One would be a commitment to making a robe, and the other or a commitment to staying on in the monastery or returning to the monastery. Again, it was a way of encouraging a sense of community. The monks would say, I want to go back to that monastery. If you felt that it was a good place to practice, if there was a sense of rapport between the monks and the lay people that would encourage you to develop that rapport. Again, it's interesting. People think of Theravada as being a selfish form of Buddhism, but it's not. It depends more on volunteer cooperation and more on this sense of community than most people would suspect. Look at how the Gatin happened today. It was all volunteer. And it all came together 
things worked, and then everybody cleaned up afterwards and went home without anybody having to give orders, without anybody being under any compulsion. There's a Thai word for this quality. It's called nam chai. It literally means a heart juice or hot heart water. But that quality of your willingness to give of yourself with, when nothing is being required, just for the good, goodness of the act in and of itself. And that's a quality that cooperation develops. So think about that. It's, the Buddha didn't, didn't just, just teach meditation. He taught a whole social structure for the monks and cooperation among the monks, cooperation between the monks and the lay people as the context for the practice. Because this quality of nam chaya, the willingness to give of yourself, this is very important in all aspects of the practice. Meditation doesn't happen unless you give of yourself. If you sit back and wait for the things to be proved for you, it doesn't happen. After all, Buddha taught a path leading to total happiness. If you wait until someone sets out on a chart to prove that total happiness can be found and this is the way to do it, you're going to die first. It just can't be done, because happiness is something that's totally inward. And the causes of happiness are inward as well. So the practice requires a sense of willingness to make sacrifice, a willingness to give of yourself. This path seems reasonable, it seems admirable. It produces good results and that you see in the people around you who practice it. As the Buddha said, those aren't absolute proofs, but they, they're indications that this is a good path. So you can't wait for everything to be proven. You have to give of yourself first before the results are going to come. This is why the Buddha created the monkhood. He created the relationship between the monks and the lay people to be one of cooperation, one of voluntary cooperation, to develop this quality of giving of yourself, to encourage this quality, the one knowing that it feels good to do something that's really good, even if it can be physically tiring demanding in one way or another, because the path is going to be tiring all the way through. It's going to be demanding. But if you're up for the challenge, it makes all the difference in the world. So this is one of the qualities that Buddha is trying to develop when he set forth the tradition of the Gitin. It involves work, involves cooperation. It involves a state of mind that's willing to, to do the work, willing to cooperate. And he asked the monks if you know those few rules that are rescinded for the period af after the Gitin, can be up to four months after the Gitin. Is all the work for the Gitin for the sake of those few rules being rescinded? And the answer is always no. There's something more that comes out of this than just the robe or just the privileges or the point is you learn in sewing. It's the sense of community, the sense of cooperation, this voluntary giving of yourself. That's the real reward of the Gaten. So reflect on that same principle in your meditation. This is a quality the Buddha encouraged. And it's not just around robes. It's through every aspect of the practice, your willingness to give of yourself. That's what makes all the difference in the world.